All right, so we're going to take a look at the header now, the next section of our website. I like to stop, start at the uh, top of my, uh, my website and work my way down. So we've done the container, which wraps everything, and now I'm going to move on to the head section here. Now, the uh, head section, if we go back and look at our HTML, is uh, right here. Okay, So it's this div, and all it contains is the image, and uh, the header is a block-level element. Not the header itself, but the fact that it's a div, right? So the div itself is a block level element with the idea of header. And because it's a div, it's going to take up the entire amount of space that it can uh, that the parent allows it to have, right? So it's going to go all the way across the screen. It's going to create some space on top and bottom, all that good stuff. So I could give it a width, right? Um, I could give it a width of uh, the width of the entire website, right? Because the header needs to stretch across the entire thing. Or I could leave it blank completely and not put in width at all because it's going to, by default, fill in because it's a block level element, right? That div is a block level element. So it's up to you. You could also make it 100% of the parent, so I can say 100%, and in case I change the width on the container, it changes with the container. Um, but again, it's almost not necessary. But I do want to show you something um, in terms of the box small. So I am going to give it a width here of 800 pixels. And I'm going to give it a height. Now the height, in this case, can come from your layout, if you know what it is, uh, or your drawing, or wherever it is that you're getting your layout from, if, even if it's inside of your, your head there. And I happen to know that it's about 100 pixels. It's actually exactly 100 pixels. So my height's 100 pixels, okay? And uh, I'm going to give it a background color, okay? Now, the background color, again, can come from one of the websites we've used before to look for colors. In this case, since I've made my layout in Photoshop, I can simply use the color picker tool here, and it gives me the hexadecimal value. Okay, So to get here, I use this uh, foreground color, click there, and then it takes me to this dialog box where I can click anywhere on the layout, and it gives me the color. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into here. Don't forget to add the, uh, the number sign. So there's my hexadecimal value for that color blue, and uh, let's see what we got. I'm going to leave it like this for now. And there we go. We got our blue header that stretches across the container. And if you look, the logo now is inside of the uh, the header as it should be, right? Here's our image. It's the logo inside this div, okay, which I've named header. And there it is, right? Now, the logo does have one issue. It's butted up against the corner here, right? There's no space around it. And uh, we need to fix that. There's a couple ways you can fix it. You could give margins to that image, which means you would need to create a class specific to the logo image that would give it some margins on top and bottom and left and right and all that good stuff. Or you could give padding inside of this blue uh, box. Okay. So uh, for now, since I'm not working on a logo and I'm not working on any classes for the logo, I'm going to give it padding inside the box because it's just where we're at in our code here. Okay. If you remember, padding can be simplified down to just uh, one property instead of padding left, top, right, and left. And it can be simplified down to one number if they all match. In this case, I'm going to give 15 pixels of padding all the way around that blue box. Okay. So I don't need to write it four times. I can just write it once. Okay, so that equals top, bottom, left, and right. And there we go. We got some space around the logo. But you might have also noticed that the box itself got bigger. This got bigger, right? It also got wider if I were to scroll um, from left to right because it's adding 15 pixels on all four sides, right? And if you remember our discussions from previous videos on the box model, you need to take that into account when you uh, decide on the overall size of your box. So what I need to do is I need to subtract from the height. Now, I'm not going to subtract just 15, so this would not be 85. I need to subtract from the top and the bottom, right, because it's 15 on both sides, so it's really 30. So that turns into 70. Okay, so 15 times 2. And this now needs to change to 770. Okay. So again, you need to subtract from the width and the height if you're including padding. Also, if you're including uh, borders or if you're including margins, you need to subtract from these. So you need to do the math and be careful. Right? So now that I've refreshed the screen, now it looks how it should. Okay. It's 800 pixels wide and it's 100 pixels tall, including the padding. Okay. So you can take these things into account on all your boxes, okay, so that's just a primary example of how that could uh, mess you up if you were just to continue and you thought that all your sizing was done correctly, but then you're padding your margins are like 
all over the place and you can't figure out why things aren't lining up, that's why. Okay. So don't forget to take that into account. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to add is a background image. Okay, you might ask yourself, what background image? Well, this guy over here on the right hand side from my layout, oops, is going to be a background image. I could just make it an image and float it to the right and keep it on the right hand side, but uh, for the purposes of this video, um, I'm going to make it a background image so we can practice working with those. So here's a background image. Again, it's URL followed by the parentheses, and inside the parentheses you put the location. In the specific case, I need to go up one level, right, because my CSS file is in its own CSS folder, so I need to go up one level, which is dot dot forward slash, then look for the images folder, then look for my image, which I know is called header image dot jpeg, okay, and we'll save this, alright, we'll go take a look at what happened, and there it is, it's repeating across the entire screen, and we don't want it to do that, we want it to only appear once, so we're going to do background, repeat, no dash repeat okay we'll go take a look at it again and it only appears once now you might ask yourself well how do I get it to move to the right hand side because all background images start at the top left hand corner aha well this is where um, we add a new property if you remember at the end of the last video I told you there was one more property for background images that we're gonna cover later and this is it it is background dash position okay so you can control where that background image begins you use it for all kinds of cool and nifty things all right so in this case it's going to start start from our top right okay so add a space between the two words top space right it could also start on bottom right or bottom left or top left top left being the default so top right in this case and there we go it's moved over to the right hand side it's exactly where i want it for my layout everything's looking pretty good all right and uh, I'm looking at uh, my layout here, and yeah, that's exactly what I had. So that's our first conversion of part of our layout from being just a graphic in Photoshop to actual code. So here's our header, right? Very simple, just a div with an image. And then look how powerful CSS is. Just a little bit of properties and values, and all of a sudden we've matched what we had inside of our Photoshop file. So that's a little taste of what's going to come. Uh, the next part will be our navigation, which will be a little more trickier, but uh, we'll continue to work our way down the page. Alright guys, see you in the next video.